Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, in this lecture we will try to uh, learn about the terminal velocity of single particle. In the uh, previous lecture we were discussing about the drag force of uh, single solid particles that is uh, acted on it by fluid flow over the solid surface. And also we are discussing about the lift force uh, and also uh, how the drag force will be acting uh, at a different uh, flow velocity and also at a different transverse number range. So, in this lecture we will try to learn that terminal velocity, but it will be only of single particle. So, in the next lecture we will try to uh, again learn about uh, what will be the terminal velocity for uh, multi particle if they are you know uh, suspending in a liquid or other medium. So, in that case uh, first of all let us learn about the terminal velocity of single particle where there will be no interaction of that single particle with the other particle. So, here uh, see that suppose a particle is falling from uh, a, you know that it is a still position uh, freely. So, in that case uh, uh, the particles will be falling under gravity in the fluid and also if fluid is uh, moving upward then uh, what will be the relative velocity of that particle that will be fall down there. So, uh, the relative motion of the particles uh, uh, in a fluid is generally under the action of the forces of buoyancy, drag and gravity. So, whenever a particle will be falling downward uh, freely, there are uh, different uh, forces will be acting on that solid particle like uh, what is that one will be called buoyancy force and another will be called drag force that we have already discussed in the previous lecture, how the drag force will be acting on a single particle and then gravity force. So, these three forces will be acting simultaneously there. But whenever you will see that particles will gain, you know that steady uh, speed there, these three particles will be balanced to each other. So, in that case uh, you know that uh, as the particle accelerates, you will see that the drag force will be increased whereas causing that acceleration to reduce. So, interesting is that whenever the particles will be falling with a certain you know velocity change with respect to time that is with acceleration, then you will see that uh, due to this acceleration you will see that the drag force will be increases because there you know uh, velocity uh, continuously will be increasing with respect to time and uh, due to that increase in velocity their drag force also, also increase because the drag force depends on that velocity as well as the uh, projected area of the particle. So, that is why you will see that whenever uh, these particles will uh, gain that acceleration or falls under an accelerative uh, you know uh, motion then they are uh, the drag force will be acting on that uh, particle and it will increase. So, when this drag force will be increasing continuously they are at a certain time there will be uh, you will see that uh, this uh, you know particles acceleration will be uh, decreasing. So, the velocity at which the acceleration uh, will be 0 that means there will be no acceleration at which uh, velocity that uh, velocity will be uh, you know called as a single particle terminal velocity. In this case, so we are uh, having these uh, three forces to you know represent that uh, single particle terminal velocity there and uh, since these three forces uh, will be acting in such way that there will be no acceleration. So, at that acceleration point that means the particles will gain that steady speed. So, that is steady speed will be called as a terminal velocity. So, what are those forces that we have discussed that that will be gravity force, buoyancy force, drag force. Now, if we do the balance of these three forces okay, and uh, at that uh, steady velocity or that there will be no change of velocity then that means we can say that acceleration force will be 0. Otherwise, the particles will be falling downward with a certain acceleration force. So, that is why we can have that what will be the net force acting on that solid particle whenever it will be falling downward. So, that net force will be is equal to gravity force minus buoyancy force and minus uh, drag force. That means, what will be the gravity force from that gravity force it will be acting downward as uh, shown in the picture by arrow sign here this gravity force that is Fz we can say that will be Mz whereas uh, 
the drag force will be uh, you know uh, will be acting upward in the upward direction ok. So, here uh, this uh, the drag force then uh, the direction of this uh, drag force will be uh, opposite to that you know gravity force. So, that is why gravity force minus drag force will be coming whereas, buoyancy force will be acting also that opposite to that you know gravity force. So, that is why again from that gravity force we have to subtract that you know buoyancy force. So, the net force will be basically that gravity force minus drag force minus buoyancy force and whatever net force will be there with that net force the particles will be falling downward. Now, if during that falling down the acceleration is uh, maintained then there will be acceleration force that can be represented by F A. So, we are having this you know force balance like this F Z minus F B minus F D is equal to F A. Okay. Now, see here interesting point that you will see that suppose if you are talking about a man uh, is falling from the aeroplane with parachute you will see initially whenever he will fall down from the aeroplane you will see that he will fall down with an acceleration and this uh, velocity of the person you will see that will be changing with respect to time. So, there will be of the profile of that velocity change with respect to time that can be represented by this profile like this. So, up to a certain time you will see that you will gain that increase in an acceleration ok that means velocity will increase with respect to time and during that period there will be some drag force acting on his body and due to that drag force he will you know realize that acceleration coming to reduce ok and at a certain time you will see that he will uh, gain the steady speed that means, at a constant velocity he will be falling downward. So, you will see that at a constant velocity he will be falling downward ok and that velocity will be called as a terminal velocity 1 and then immediately he just open his parachute and when he open that parachute you will see that the parachute will gain again the drag force there along with his body then there will be again increasing the drag force and due to that drag force the acceleration will again you know reduced that will be represented by the deceleration. So, whenever he will open his parachute and falling down with that parachute the drag force will be acting on this parachute as well as his body and the speed of him you know you will see that it will be decreasing that means he will be gaining the deceleration. Now, at a certain time you will see that this deceleration will come to you know 0 that means, he will gain again steady speed and this is steady speed again it will be called as a terminal velocity that means, he will fall down with that terminal velocity again. So, what happened initially he will gain acceleration and after a certain time he will get the constant velocity that constant velocity will will be called as terminal velocity after that whenever he will open the parachute he will again gain the drag force and due to that drag force his acceleration will be reducing that is called deceleration and after a certain time he again will gain the constant speed that constant speed will be called as terminal velocity 2. So, with that terminal velocity again he will be falling downward to the ground. So, this is the case you will see that here also in animation it is shown that. So, initially that you know velocity will be increasing with respect to time and after that it will gain a constant velocity and then after opening parachute he will gain the redux reduction of velocity with respect to time and after a certain time again he will gain the constant velocity. So, in this case you have to remember that whenever you will get the constant velocity that means, the velocity does not change with respect to time at that velocity it will be regarded as terminal velocity. So, this is the concept of terminal velocity ok. So, here velocity with respect he to time actually and after this are two terminal velocity initially up to a certain time at a, a higher speed he will uh, falling down before opening his parachute 
that will be higher terminal velocity whenever he will open that parachute and after certain time whenever he will gain the constant speed that will be your terminal velocity 2 but it will be you know less than that earlier terminal velocity because here he is getting more drag force on his body as well as by parachute. So, that is why here deceleration will be there. So, this is the concept of terminal velocity. Okay. Now, uh, let us derive that what will be the terminal velocity there. Okay. So, here how we can then uh, derive that terminal velocity. Let us you know uh, consider this part apple is falling down uh, uh, from that apple tree. So, here whenever apple is falling downward this uh, apple will you know will be under the forces of gravity, drag force and buoyancy force. And at the terminal velocity condition there will be no acceleration force. That means, the particles will be falling down at a steady speed. So, in that case we can write this force balance here as earlier that gravity force minus buoyancy force minus drag force will be equal to acceleration force. What is the gravity force? How will you you know calculate that gravity force? So, if you know the particle diameter if we consider that it is a spherical particle and its diameter is dp. Okay. So, in this case we can say that what will be the volume of this particle very simple it will be 1 by 6 pi dp cube this is the volume and if you multiply this volume with its density if you know the density of the particle then you will get the mass of this particle and mass into uh, gravitational acceleration it will be called as gravity force. So, this gravity force will be equal to pi dp cube by 6 rho p into z and then coming to the buoyancy force. Buoyancy force is basically what the force that is exerted by the same volume of liquid which will be displaced by that volume of the particle that is called you know buoyancy force. So, this buoyancy force again what will be the mass of that fluid which is you know replaced by that particle. Now, for that you know first what will be the volume of that particle and then if you multiply the uh, density of that uh, fluid then you will get that uh, mass of the fluid which is displaced by the particle then into z. So, it will be called as buoyancy force and then drag force. Drag force already we have discussed in the previous class that uh, what is drag force. So, drag force is basically that C d into projectional area into kinetic energy. So, that is your drag coefficient into projectional area into kinetic energy per unit volume. So, this is your you know drag force as per earlier uh, you know definition of the drag force. And uh, here u is the velocity of the particle since we are considering that uh, the particles falls with a terminal velocity. So, we can consider here that u t as a terminal velocity. Then that will be is equal to 0 y at this terminal velocity there will be no acceleration force. So, from this you know force balance we can simplify and after simplification we can get u t will be is equal to root over. 4 g d p by 3 c d into rho p minus rho f by rho f. Here d p is the particle diameter, c d is the drag coefficient and uh, uh, rho p is the particle density and uh, here rho f is the fluid density. So, under this terminal velocity we can say that the terminal velocity you know will be is equal to this that you have to remember. So, this is very important you have to remember throughout your life you can say that because this is the very important uh, you know equation that you have to remember. Now, it depends on what the drag coefficient you will see that also the particle diameter it depends on particle diameter drag coefficient and you can say that fluid and particle properties okay? fluid and particle properties. So, under this terminal velocity we can also calculate what would be the C d value from this equation simple from this equation just simplifying this equation and finding the C d value from this equation. So, interesting that we are having that terminal velocity is the proportional to the square root of the particle diameter. Terminal velocity is inversely proportional to the drag coefficient the square root of drag coefficient we can say 
and also this terminal velocity is proportional to the square root of density difference of particle and fluid. And also you can say that it is inversely proportional to the square root of the fluid density. Okay. So, here let us consider the different flow conditions like Reynolds number and uh, you know that other condition like that. You will see that if we consider that Stokes flow condition that we have already uh, discussed about that Stokes flow condition where the uh, flow will be very laminar and uh, Reynolds number at this flow condition it will be uh, less than uh, 0.2. So, at this Reynolds number that means at this Stokes law region sometimes it is called creeping flow that is very laminar flow you will see that this C d value that means drag coefficient will be equal to 24 by R e p that means Reynolds number of the particle. So, how Reynolds number of the particle is defined this is rho p u t d p by mu. So, in this case if you substitute the value of C d here in this uh, terminal velocity equation. So, you will get this terminal velocity will be equal to what this. So, at a Stokes law region or creeping flow condition or where R e p less than 0 0.2 u t will be equal to d p square that into rho p minus rho f into z by 18 mu. Here interesting that this terminal velocity at this Stokes flow condition will be proportional to the square of the particle diameter and also it is inversely proportional to the viscosity of the fluid and directly proportional to the that uh, deviation of the fluid density compared to the you know particle density. And then coming to that point of intermediate region where the Reynolds number will be within the range of 0 0.2 to 1000. So, there the terminal velocity will be proportional to dp to the power 1.1 and rho p minus rho f to the power 0 0.7 and it will be proportional to the rho f to the power minus 0 0.29 and viscosity to the power minus 0 0.43. Here also we can say that this terminal velocity will be directly proportional to the you know 1.1 power of particle diameter whereas, the it will be you know proportional to that uh, difference of that uh, fluid density uh, compared to that uh, uh, particle uh, density to the power 0.7 whereas, it will be inversely proportional to the you know fluid density and inversely proportional to the you know uh, that uh, viscosity. Now, in this case that u t you cannot you know get it from directly from this equation here because C d value is not known to here. So, in this case that u t to be found from the you know graphs where that C d value is given within a certain range of that Reynolds number. So, from which you can calculate what will be the terminal velocity. So, once you get that C d value within this range then you can easily calculate what will be the terminal velocity from this equation. Then coming to that higher Reynolds number range where the particle Reynolds number will be within the range of 1000 to 2 into 10 to the power 5 it is called Newton's law region. Okay. So, at this region you will see that the drag coefficient will be coming almost constant and its value is 0 0.44. So, once you substitute this value of 0 0.44 here instead of C d then you can get it the simplified form of u t will be equal to 1.74 into d p into rho p minus rho f by rho f into z whole to the power half. So, this is your terminal velocity. So, at a different flow regime we can get the terminal velocity based on the drag coefficient value at that different you know flow regimes. Okay. So, we can easily calculate. Now, coming to that point where if you do not know the regime at which the particle diameter or terminal velocity which is to be calculated. So, this is the very important point that you have to calculate the terminal velocity where you do not know the regime. So, how to do that? There are two actually uh, methods to calculate here. One is actually to calculate u t for a given particle size. This is the case one based on which you have to calculate uh, what will be the terminal velocity if you know the particle diameter. 
So, in this case what you have to do? You have to first consult a graph where log C D with respect to log R E P data given to you that is experimental data that is given to you that is available in the textbook okay, that you have to consult. After that what you have to do? You have to calculate that C D into R E P square as per your problem as per your you know known values. So, what is that C D and R E P square? After substitution of C D and R E P square we are getting here like this that means C D R E P square will be equal to 4 by 3 D P cube rho f into rho p minus rho f by mu square into z. Okay. Now, question is that from where we are getting this you know that C D value, C D value that we have calculated earlier here this is C D, okay, this C D. So, here C D into R E P square after simplification you are getting this 4 by 3 d p cube rho f into rho p minus rho f into z by mu square. Here it will be constant, why it will be constant? Because here d p is fixed it is known to you, rho f density of the fluid also fixed here, particle density that means rho p is fixed, g is constant, mu is also constant because the same fluid here it is not changed. So, here this value will be coming as constant value. So, let it be m 1. Now, taking logarithm on both sides we can get log C D that will be equal to log m 1 minus you know you will see that 2 into log R E P. So, this equation you will get from this C D into R E P square value. So, from this you can say that this is a straight line with negative slope of so, this equation to be you know drawn in that graph which you have consulted that is from the text or some other sources like where log C D versus log R A P data are given. So, in that graph that you have to you know draw this line of this log C D is equal to log M 1 minus 2 log R E P. So, here you will get this equation like this. Okay this will be your equation. So, this equation wherever it will be intersect with that you know log C D versus log R E P data that is on the chart from that intersection point you will be able to find out what will be the value of log R E P value. If you know that log R E P value here then you will be able to find out what will be the R E P value just by taking anti log and once you get that R E P value you will be able to calculate what will be the terminal velocity ok, what will be the terminal velocity. So, this is here actually this graph is here negative slope not here this will be here. So, here it will be your intersection point and what will be the R E P value. So, once you know that R E P value so U T will be is equal to what in that case R E P mu by rho P you know d p. In this case d p is known to you. So, you have to find out u t value here just correction is there this is the equation with negative slope of minus 2. Okay. Now, next one is that to calculate the size d p here in this case it will be size d p for a given u t value. So, in this case what you have to do you have to first calculate c d by r e p value. So, c d by r e p again after substitution of value of c d and R E P you will get this. This is also a constant. Okay. Now, from this you can get the logarithm on both sides and you will get this equation here and this equation also is a you know straight line okay, with a slope 1 positive 1. So, in this case you will see that this line will be coming with a positive slope of plus 1 and wherever this straight line will be intersecting with that given log C D versus log R E P data and from that intersection point corresponding value of D P can be calculated from the log R E P value. So, here from this log R E P value again the D P can be calculated like this here R E P 
this is known from this value ok and uh, then uh, into mu by you know rho p into u t because here u t is given to you d p to be found. So, in this way you can easily calculate the terminal velocity and particle diameter at any you know flow regimes. Now, let us uh, do an example based on this uh, you know concept of uh, you know calculating the terminal velocity uh, at a particular range of flow. Now, in this case a problem is given that a sphere of density 2500 kg per meter cube that falls freely under gravity in a fluid of density 700 kg per meter cube and viscosity 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second. Given that the terminal velocity of the sphere is 0 0.15 meter per second. Calculate its diameter. What would be the edge length of a cube of the same material falling in the same fluid at the same terminal velocity. Okay. So, let us consider first what would be the you know diameter what will be the diameter of that particle here terminal velocity is given even uh, density of the particle is given and the particles on which uh, fluid it will be falling downward uh, it is uh, given also this is 700 kg per meter cube and also terminal velocity is given to you. So, in this case you have to find out what will be the particle diameter. So, in this case we know that terminal velocity ut and need to find the particle diameter dp since we do not know which regime is appropriate here we must first calculate the dimensionless group like C d by R e p as discussed earlier. So, C d by R e p will be is equal to what as per substitution of C d and R e p we are having this value. So, as per this you know that if you change the R e p value respective you know C d value you will get. For R e p is equal to 100 you will get the C d value 0 0.712 for R e p 1000 then you will get C d is equal to 7.12 and for R e p 10000 this C d value will be equal to 71.2. Now, plot this log C d versus log R e p okay? and then you will get there will be a certain intersection and of course, this will be a straight line of positive slope 1 in the log log coordinates of that standard drag curve. So, after having this uh, here let us see this one. So, this is the standard you know C d versus R e p curve and here you will see that this is log log graph. So, that is why here it is not that log C d and log R e p here log log graph it itself. So, here this is the you know intersection point that we have obtained this value here uh, this is the straight line as per that uh, you know uh, different value of C d and R e p. So, he, this is the intersection point and from this intersection point corresponding value of you know this R e p corresponding value of R e p. Now, question is just why this line is considered here since it is a spherical particle as per problem it is given. So, for spherical particle we know that sphericity is equal to 1. So, for this sphericity this line is you know is appropriate. So, here from this line intersection point we are getting the corresponding value of R e p. Once we know that R e p value once we know that R e p value we will get the d p value. So, R e p is here 130 and from this 130 value. So, other things u t is given to you d p is given to you mu is given to you also rho p is given to you. So, from this uh, d p will be is equal to what? 130 into mu divided by rho p by u t. So, that will be is equal to 619 micrometer. Similarly, for a cube having the same terminal velocity under the same condition the same C d versus R e p relationship to be applied. Only the standard drag curve is that for a cube psi will be is equal to 0 0.806. Okay. So, here if suppose this is the cubical particle. So, here that you have to consider this drag curve. So, in the next here what would be the edge length of a cube of same material falling in the same fluid at the same terminal velocity. So, here in this case we are having that for this you know cubical substances. So, there the intersection point is here and for this cube the respective value here is 310. 
So, from this 310, so dp value will be equal to 148 since others parameters are known to you. Okay? So, at this condition we are having that you know the what is the edge length of that cube this is basically that dp value to be found. So, it will be 148. Okay? So, in this way you can solve that whenever the terminal velocity is known to you how to find out that particle diameter this is the method. Whereas, if you know the particle diameter and find out the terminal velocity then you have to consider this uh, equation and from this equation you have to find out what will be the intersection point. From this intersection point you have to find out what will be the respective REP value and then REP from that REP value what will be the terminal velocity. I think you understood this problem. Okay. Next another problem let us uh, have a particle of equivalent volume diameter 0 0.5 millimeter density is given 2000 kg per meter cube and sphericity is 0 0.6 that will fall freely under gravity in a fluid of density 1.6 kg per meter cube and viscosity is given of that fluid 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 Pascal second. You have to calculate what will be the terminal velocity that means uh, reached by the particle. In this case we uh, know the particle size okay, and also we know that uh, density of the fluid, density of the particle, even viscosity of the fluid. So, it is very easy to calculate what will be the you know terminal velocity whenever the particle will gain it. So, here also without knowing that you know regime in which regime actually it is there. So, you have to find out that you know terminal velocity. So, we have to follow this equation here C d into R e p square that you have to calculate first and it will be coming constant this value will come. So, then consider that R e p value then respective C d value will be calculated from this equation. Then what C d value respective R e p is equal to 100 it will be coming 1.307 what will be the C d value 0.013 for the respective R e p value of 1000. So, for different REP value different CD value you are getting now plot it here. Okay? So, plot it and here the particle sphericity is it is given 0.6. So, we have to follow this line and after you know plotting those datas REP versus CD in the plot we are having this line okay? and this line will intersect this you know drag coefficient profile here okay? and what will be the respective REP value this is like this 40. So, the plotted line intersects the standard drag curve here for a sphericity of psi at the 0 0.6 the corresponding REP value is 40 and then this corresponding value of 40 of this REP value you will be able to find out what will be the terminal velocity. So, this terminal velocity will come ut will be is equal to what 40 into mu divided by rho p into dp. It is given to you that means 40 into mu, mu value is I think what is the value is given 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 the 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by rho p, rho p value that means particle density is given I think uh, 2 thousands. 2000s and uh, into what is that dp particle diameter it is given 0 0.5 millimeter that means 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, it will be coming as almost 1.0 this will be meter per second. So, this is your terminal velocity. So, in this way for any flow regimes we can calculate the terminal velocity if you know the particle diameter. Now, let us solve some other problems which is very important that is you know given in gate examination you will see that here problem uh, it has given in gate 2020 as rigid spherical particle that undergoes free settling in a liquid of density 750 kg per meter cube and viscosity 9.81 into 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second. The density of the particle is 3000 kg per meter cube and the particle diameter is given 
2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square. Assuming Stokes law to be valid, what will be the terminal velocity of the particle? Very simple here the already flow regime is given. Since it is Stokes uh, flow condition, so here C D value will be is equal to 24 by R E P. So, once you know that C D by R E P, then you will be able to calculate. Now, at that Stokes law condition also we have given that after substitution of C D by R E P in that terminal velocity equation for that C D and after simplification this equation is coming. Okay. Earlier that we have given. Now, everything is given to you D P value that is 2 into 10 to the minus 4 square into 3000 minus here rho f is given 750 and uh, also the g value is given and 18 into mu mu value is given also 9.81 uh, into what is that 10 to the power minus 3. So, ultimately after calculation the terminal velocity is coming as 0 0.005 meter per second and this problem here what is the terminal velocity in meter per second calculate from Stokes law for a particle of diameter here 0 0.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter density 2800 kg per meter cube settling in water of density 1000 kg per meter cube and a viscosity of 10 to the power minus 3 kg per meter cube meter second. So, in this case assume g will be equal to 10 meter per second square. So, in this case again the at Stokes law condition the same equation that can be used. So, after substitution of all parameters here you will get this terminal velocity as 0 0.01. Again another example it is given uh, for that calculation of terminal velocity uh, and comparison of terminal velocity of two particles two types of particles there. Here are two identically sized spherical particles A and B having densities rho A and rho B respectively are settling in a fluid of density rho assuming free settling under turbulent flow condition what would be the ratio of terminal settling velocity of the particle A to that of particle B? This problem is given in gate 2008. In this case, terminal velocity of a particle is basically the definition that U T will be equal to root over 4 G D by 3 C D into rho P minus rho F by rho F. Here, the particle diameter for those two particles here, particle A and particle B are same. So, we can write D P A will be equal to D P B. Now, after substitution of this you know d p a and d p b value and for constant you know fluid density the same fluid, but particle uh, density will be different. So, in that case after substitution of those values and then taking a ratio of this then we are getting this value u t a by u t b. So, in this way okay. and then finally, we are getting after simplification root over you know rho a minus rho by rho b minus rho. So, you can get it. Another problem based on this terminal velocity is given in gate 2009. The problem is that the terminal velocity of a 6 millimeter diameter glass sphere whose density is 2500 kg per meter cube in a viscous Newtonian liquid whose density is 1500 kg per meter cube is 100 micrometer per second. If the particle Reynolds number is a small and the value of acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square, then find the viscosity of the liquid. Again, the Stokes law condition to be used. So, here uh, as per Stokes flow regime that u t will be equal to d p square into rho p minus rho f into z by 18 mu. So, from this you have to calculate what will be the viscosity of the fluid. So, others are given to you. So, mu will be equal to d p square into rho p minus rho f into z by 18 uh, u t. So, after substitution of all uh, values here and uh, calculation that will give you that 196.2 Pascal second. And uh, this is also one important problem that is also given in gate 2016. Consider a rigid solid sphere that will be falling with a constant velocity in a fluid. The flowing data are known at the conditions of interest. Viscosity of the fluid is 0 0.1 Pascal second, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square and uh, you know the density of the particle is given, the density of the fluid also is given. What is the diameter of the largest sphere that settles in the Stokes law design? So, you will see that as per problem again the statements Reynolds number 
of largest particle is found to be from this equation. Okay. It is given because Reynolds number is equal to what is that rho ut dp by mu rho is given to you dp is not known to you ut also not known to you mu is not known to you but its value will be what 0.1 maximum for that your Reynolds condition it will be you know less than 0.1. So, ut will be is equal to what like this. Now, under Stokes law resumes so we can say that ut will be is equal to dp square into rho p minus rho f into z by 18 mu. So, that will be is equal to 0.1 mu by 1180 into dp. So, from this after solving you know the dp will be coming as 2.05 millimeter. Okay. Then coming to the point where the terminal velocity of single particle of centrifugal sedimentation to be you know found. Now, centrifuges are extremely used for you know separating fine solids from suspension in a liquid. Here the centrifuges are used for separating fine particles and droplets. It is necessary to consider only the Stokes law regime in calculating the drag between the particles and liquid. And in this case uh, you will see that terminal velocity will be different from that you know free falling there. Here the centrifugal force will be acting. So, based on which we can have this you know terminal velocity of single particle of centrifugal sedimentation. A particle here moves outwards as per figure towards the wall of a bowl of a centrifuge. The accelerating force progressively increases and therefore, the particle never reaches an equilibrium velocity as is the case in the gravitational field. Now, neglecting the inertia of the particle then at Stokes regime we can write that UTC under this centrifugal action then UTC will be equal to dr by dt. So, from which you can get this equation that dp square into rho p minus rho f into omega square r by 18 mu where it will be equal to ut into omega square r by z. Here you will see that uh, ut is defined as, as per that gravitational field the dp square into rho p minus rho f into z by 18 mu as per the Stokes law condition. So, here ut is the terminal velocity in centrifugal field, ut is the terminal velocity in absence of centrifugal field, r is the radius of the centrifuge, small r is the radial distance from the central dp the particle diameter, rho p particle density, rho f the fluid density, mu is the viscosity of the fluid, g is the gravitational acceleration and omega is the rotational speed. Okay. So, based on which you can calculate what will be the UTC that means terminal velocity of the single particle at this centrifugal field. Now, what will be the time required to settle through a liquid layer of thickness h? at the wall of the bowl is given by integration of that equation earlier equation here what will be the time required to settle. So, here T r then it will be is equal to after integration then it will be coming like this. Okay. So, where liquid layer of the thickness will be h that will be equal to r minus r 0 as per figure given in the slide. So, T r is the minimum retention time required for all particles of size greater than d p to be deposited on the walls of the centrifuge uh, bowl. So, this is the uh, things that you have to calculate what will be the minimum retention time that will be required for all the particles of size diameter less than dp to be deposited on the wall of the bowl. So, in this way you have to calculate. Okay. So, here one example is given and uh, in a bowl centrifugal classifier operating at 60 rpm with a fluid of viscosity like 0 0.001 kg per meter second. The liquid surface is at a distance of 0 0.20 meter from the axis of rotation. What would be the time required for a particle of specific gravity 2.5 and a particle diameter 0 0.0001 meter to traverse a you know distance of uh, 0 0.05 meter from the liquid surface in the centrifuge. So, here this is the equation to calculate that terminal velocity at that centrifugal uh, field. So, all the parameter here given all the uh, data are given uh, as per problem and after substitution you will get this 6.57 into 10 to the minus 3 that will be meter per second. The 
this is the thing. So, it, it will be your velocity at which that uh, that particles will be settled and what time it will be required for the particle of specific gravity of that it will be whenever it will be you know uh, moving from uh, distance of 0 0.05 meter from that liquid surface in the uh, centrifuge. So, that time to be calculated. So, that can be calculated just you know that just by what is the distance it is given 0 0.05 meter. So, 0 0.05 meter divided by this velocity then you will get simply what will be the time required. So, it is around 7 point you know that 6 uh, uh, second. So, I think you understood that here what is the terminal velocity, what is the basic concept of terminal velocity and how that terminal velocity can be calculated by knowing that uh, flow regime and without knowing also flow regime from the standard chart of that you know uh, drag uh, coefficient uh, that you can easily calculate. Also how to calculate that uh, you know terminal velocity of that single particle whenever it will be your under centrifugal field. So, uh, I think uh, it will be uh, enough for that uh, terminal velocity here to understand and in the next class I think uh, we will be you know discussing uh, here again that uh, what will be the terminal velocity or settling velocity of the particle here it will not be a single particle there will be multiple particles will be there. There will be certain interaction between particle and particle and fluid and because of which that terminal velocity will be different from that single particle terminal velocity. So, that terminal velocity will be discussing in the next class. So, thank you have a nice day.